Hey guys, Mark here. I am once again in the Sheep River Valley. I am really running out of stuff to do down here. And there's a lot of new snow here right now, so. Yeah, but uh, be that as it may, I've parked down here as far as I can go. You go on the winter road, you turn left, you come down here, this uh, campground right down by the river, there's a little day use area. And let's see if, see if I can't go do this one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm in the purple one as usual. This actually isn't in here, this hike. But the maps uh, will make it so I can show you what I'm gonna do. So here I am here, this is the winter gate up here. I'm gonna walk, I think I'm gonna attack this straight away. So I'm gonna go up Mount McNabb here. I have an all trail track to go do this. And then I will probably come across like this. And uh, I've made a waypoint over here as to what I think is the best place to intercept the track over here. And then, uh, yeah, and then it's back down here and back to the car. It's kind of a mystery trail down here that I might go and, you know, we'll see what I feel like, right? But uh, yeah, that's what I'm planning to do. So this actually isn't even in this book. It's just, uh, you come up here, go across, or I can just go back down, All right? Busting out the sunglasses now. There's a lot of snow and it's sunny. It's essential, like everything's white. It just reflects like crazy, right? Look at this. Look at my tire, that gives you a bit of a, a sense. All right? It's beautiful though, like it sparkles and you know, the trees, some of them have hoarfrost on them. I saw it driving in still. Hoarfrost is just fantastic. I'm the only one here, shocking. All right. All right, first thing I gotta do is go down and cross the Sheep River. I'm hoping it's, it should be in better shape than it was. Uh, a few days ago, I crossed it successfully, at least here anyways. And uh, should be, a, you know, like I say, a few more nights of freezing, some snow. See, how, see what it looks like. So as far as I know, this is Mount McNabb. They really will attach the moniker of mountain or mount to all kinds of things quite loosely in the Kananaskis, right? To me, this would be like McNabb Hill or something. But, yeah, you know, it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go do Mount McNabb Ugh, in the middle of the winter. And uh, yeah, it makes a perfect winter destination because it really isn't that high. All right, over here the river is actually still openly flowing, but that part there is right in the sun. Over here is in the shadows. That's generally where you want to cross. Well, that's where you want to cross anyway. You don't want to be messing with this creek too, right? So you cross here if you're going to the Price Camp Trail in Mount McNabb. Over there is uh, Wolf Creek. Here we go. I crossed this uh, four or five days ago and it was, it wasn't like confidently solid, but it was pretty good. I just don't like the fact that I'm the guinea pig. There's animals tracks here, but yeah. Okay. Beautiful, all this fresh snow. This is so nice. All right. Butts across here, here we go, woo! <laughs> That'll give you a bit of a start sometimes. You'll break through like kind of a top layer, but then you'll hit an even a bigger layer underneath, right? Let's see here. I wanna get up here. Always be careful with this, right? I broke through the ice my last hike. I was a long way from the car too, but I knew that the Sheep River wasn't that deep. But be careful, like at least in this case, if I broke through, even if I fell, I broke through, lost my balance and fell sideways and got soaked. The car is right up there. So, all right, you know. Yeah, 
Let's talk about safety. Know your gear, know your trail, know, know yourself. Uh, I'm physically just fine for doing this. I've done a lot of this. Know your gear, well, I've got uh, pretty much everything on right now. I think I could have probably brought another layer for my legs, but oh well. Uh, I have my Garmin, I have my snow ice cleats. I actually did not bring my uh, snowshoes, so I could end up post holding a little bit and paying the price, but oh well. Um, yeah, and then know the trail. I have this pretty well mapped out. It's really just actually climbing Mount McNabb that I don't know all the trails underneath it. I know where to come up, go on, I know where to get off, and I have an all trail track, so. All right, let's carry on. Okay, there's the Price Camp Trail. I'm gonna wander up here a little bit and start heading up here through wherever I can find. This is pretty much a bushwhack as far as I can tell. Let's figure this out. All right, I've managed to make my way up through, up into a couple of these different meadows. Just kind of come and check and out some different cuts here. This actually wasn't a cut, this thing's just broken. And then there's a, a salt lick. If they have some of the cows back here sometimes. So I'm gonna walk back over here. The all trails track actually shows it. You kind of walk that way and then attack from that side because you can see there's nothing but spruce trees in front of me, right? So that's when you kind of wonder where to go. All right, I found some relatively open forest over here and here it's starting to go up. So I've pretty much found a place to attack this. One thing about if I had to go jamming through the spruce trees is, you know, I mean, the snow would start getting down my back eventually and that's not a good time, All right? So I definitely won't want to be wishwhacking in this. All right, start hammering off some elevation here. Look around, everything looks pretty natural in here. And then you come to this little area where probably, I don't know, about a dozen trees have been cut. So the natives might've come back here and made a sweat lodge, right? These are just about thick enough to make nice, nice things to just kind of stand up, right? I don't see one around, mind you. But the configuration is right. It's not far from water. It's not too far from the vehicles. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. This doesn't last either. When the sun's hitting it, then the snow melts off the trees and it doesn't last. So this in particular is special when you have snow in the trees and the sun is hitting it. And you got all these funny looking little bumps from the stuff that kind of grows underneath. Yeah. This is Wolf Creek. This is something I haven't done yet. All right, okay. Kind of flat here, but there's sort of a little ridge starting to climb up there. So I think I will take that. That looks, looks like a good way to go up. This is very, very cool. Look what the mountain, look what the snow does to this, to the dirt kind of mounds coming down. Pretty warm now, I've got my heart beating a little bit. It's not too bad elevation wise, but where you're coming up the snow, adds a bit more of a challenge. Okay, Let's see what else I can accomplish here. This is, this is fun, I like it. Is there a trail or isn't there a trail, right? Somebody came up and went to a lot of trouble to do this. This is chainsaw work, so. I'm definitely on something that somebody put some love into. All right, here's a drift fence, and it's pretty obvious where to go. You know, just up here. Once I got past that one meadow with all the spruce trees, it's been pretty obvious. It hasn't been hard at all to figure out the best way to attack the elevation. 
All right. You can see this keeps going for a bit, but I think this is the part you see from the car, right? From the ledge over there, so. Actually, it keeps going a little bit. See how much higher this bad boy goes. Delightful hiking. This is, this is perfect. Okay, I followed the drift fence until it was obvious that I shouldn't anymore. You know, I started to go down this. So now coming up here, I'm gonna attack this guy. You look at the elevation topo on all trails, there's a top, and then it'll go down a bit, and then there's another, you climb to another top, and that should be the last, that's the part that's actually officially called Mount McNabb. And then there's actually like another third top past it, so likely I will go hike all the tops and then just keep going west until I get to my, the place where I figured out I should pop out on the, uh, the Mount McNabb Trail. This is kind of interesting when you see this. There's absolutely no evidence of forest fire anywhere, but what will happen sometimes is the tree will get hit by lightning and then it will burn like right from the inside out, all right? I mean, it's even right close to other trees. They didn't burn. Yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it's kind of a neat thing to see sometimes. Woo! All right, here's a little flat spot. This is the first top I talked about. Oh. All right, looks like you go down a little bit down there and then climb up again. Well, I looked to the right and I just kind of followed this down a little bit, trying to avoid coming down too far, but here's the last top, Mount McNabb. You can't really get a clear shot of it. All trails, I just kept walking, even though it's just starting to go down a little more clearly now. You can see that uh, I'm gonna have to definitely go down a little farther and then kind of attack the last top, right? Which I don't know if there's any view up there. Sure doesn't look like much, but maybe we'll get lucky. It's another reason why it's a good winter objective, right? I mean, you wanna go climb a mountain with a real view in the summer, so. All right, carry on through here. So, I've been coming down nicely, but, and I know I want to come down a bit. The question is, when do you cut over and get to the mountain? I checked all trails, and actually they cut over a while ago. So, well, not a while ago, but before this. So, I think it's time to head over and, you know, like, you don't want to start heading down this pass mistakenly, right? You just want to pass, a little coal between the mountains. You just want to get down to that coal. Don't lose any more footing than necessary. So now I'll start walking kind of flat, side hill a little bit. See what I can find over here. If they went over here, then it must have been, you know, can't have been uh, too bad as far as the bushwhack is concerned. Okay, it's going well. Bushwhacking isn't too bad. You can see there's Bit of hopscotch I gotta do, but nothing too rough. And pretty soon up here it's gonna get steep. See how that goes. What do we got? Oh yeah, that is a chainsaw. Once upon a time someone hauled the chainsaw up on their back and tried to clear some of this out. All right, I've come to the, uh, the elevation, to the climb. The all trails goes up here, but more importantly, the all trails comes back down. 
here. You don't know, man. Someone could not know what they're doing and then post it to all trails. So nobody evaluates them. But if they came back down the same way, then if they came back down a different way, then yeah. So yeah, it says something when they came back down the same way. It basically says that it was probably fine. Well, it's going all right. It's funny how you can look at a hillside and see just nothing but green, but you just don't know. Is it crowded? Does it suck in there to hike? Like, look how wide open this is. It is so easy and nice. Yeah. I think it's just up here. I don't think I'm too, too far away now. Well, I got to the top of something, but it's a ridge. Now I've got to walk this way, and the top of Mount McNabb is up here someplace. Woo! Got most of the elevation taken care of, though. Well, I had to look on my phone to see if this was a big moment, but apparently not. Apparently it's a little higher up over here. Almost, baby. Woo. Starting to get some views. This is just false summit, false summit, false summit, false summit. You never know. You see an objective, they climb to it. Oops, not yet. But I'm having fun. It's perfect level of cold, but with some sun. Beautiful snow. Yeah. All right. The bench, some rocks, little rock ring. Just me in the snow and the hills. Cannon ask us. Woo! <laughs> Those of you who are wondering, hour and 45 minutes to get up here. And I mean, the snow, climbing on this much snow has slows me down a bunch, right? But yeah. Now I can just hang out. I mean, there's not much of a view, but because there's trees, it's not, like if you're on top of anything substantial and there's no trees, you don't stay up there long. It's just howling wind. So this is, uh, this is a nice place to just to hang out and chill. All right, I've had my little rest. Enjoy the top. I'm gonna try and through hike this now. There is a trail on Mass Me that goes a little farther to like another top. So first we'll start with that. And then I will hike to uh, a waypoint I made at the top of this like pass over there that, um, you know, kind of the highest part of the Mount McNabb Trail when it crosses. And yeah, so that shows is 1.3 kilometers away. So at that point, I will pretty much be on my own. And that could be a little dangerous. I could, uh, I could come to like a cliff or something. We'll see what happens. Worst comes to worst, I will follow my footprints back up here and then go back out the way I came. All right, so now I'm on my own coming down. The immediate theory is don't go down like that. Don't go down like that. Try to stay on the kind of the hump, even though it's tempting to go around like there's a whole mess of trees that are down or something. And then, uh, yeah, I've got the topo 
because I have the all trail, all trails map downloaded. So I see that it goes down here, then it comes kind of comes up to the left to another little top, and then I can figure that out, right? You use the you use the elevation, the climb gradients on the topo to figure out. You know, hopefully you can avoid any kind of cliffs like that. Figure out the best way down. Going pretty well so far. It is nice. Just as open and clear on this side of Mount McNabb as it was on the other side. And I'm starting to see the next top over here. So maybe a bit more climbing again, but that's okay because it looks like there's an outstanding view off that one. I got some deer down there. I did actually yell. Oh, there they are. I did actually yell about five minutes ago. I'm surprised they didn't hear me. But I've also seen very few tracks out here, so no cougar, no bear. Hey, cougar! Hey, bear! There you go. No, I'm not gonna see anything. That's, <laughs> that's the way it is. That's the way I roll. I see nothing. No cougars, no bears. Ooh, what do we got here? Uh, not bad, not bad. Not bad at all. All right, let's dance over this. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind coming and doing this top. All right, I'm in the flat part. I always think what a nice place this would be to camp. They're so insanely peaceful and nice up here, but there's almost never any views <laughs> and there's no water. So it'd be tough to camp in these little flat spots in between the in between the hills and between the mountains. Okay, this has nicer views than the official Mount McNabb peak. Look at this. I'm gonna get over here. Got a nice, I know it's nice and open over here. I've actually come down a little bit in order to get nice views out this direction. I wonder which one is Mount Dyson. They all look roughly the same height. Here's Mount McNabb. Here's that clearing where I took a little bit of footage of this. Cool. Okay, this is the direction I want to go. On the topo, it shows it like barely descending at all, but this is, I don't much care for this, right? My waypoint is 700 meters this direction. I think I'm gonna go down the way I came up, which was just nice. And then I will, uh, you know, lose a lot of elevation that way. And then I will turn left and start making a beeline. I think this is, I think, I'm hoping anyway that my waypoint is before you come up that. But we'll see. Okay, figure this out. I have to say that I feel truly grateful and fortunate to be back here. Very few people come and see something like this. It always makes it, it makes it special. All right, it makes it cool. Um, some people go see Mount McNabb, but very few people through hike and keep going. I can guarantee you that this area, like everything that I was looking at over there is deserted. Deserted. Yeah, there's not that many people back there when the winter gates are open. So yeah, <laughs> except for me, like five days ago being completely insane. <laughs> All right, this is so easy right now. It's going just as well as it has the rest of the day, even though I'm in completely virgin territory. I'll flash up a picture of where I am on Maps Me. 
600 meters until the uh, top of the pass waypoint that I made roughly a week ago now. And uh, yeah, going very, very well. One thing to keep in mind, if you're looking at doing this, the snow is definitely a couple inches deeper on this side. So you get to the top of McNabb and the snow is already kind of a thing. Maybe just turn back and go back the way you came. Okay, so interesting to note, it appears and it shows on the topo as well that there's another top here somewhere. I'm really not that interested. I've done, I don't know, there's like five tops already I've crested. So, so I'm pretty much kind of, I've kind of abandoned the highest line and I'm kind of going down to the right of this top and heading straight for, which is this kind of a little draw here forming. And I'm heading right for my, uh, the waypoint I made. All right, I am kind of side hilling around this top. I'm taking a bit of a chance. I don't know how steep it will get up here, right? I didn't want to just cave into this draw. All right, I'm mean, gonna want to get to the trail. The trail is down there or someplace. According to my app, my waypoint is like 250 meters this way. Now, I'm not gonna climb up and down. So I'm still trying to side hill around this, but we'll see. You don't know, when you side hill, you could be coming up to some big steep ass cliff, right? You don't know. And then you're kind of, uh, well, do I turn back? Do I take a chance? So, yeah. Anyway, carry on. See what happens. I am getting around this thing. It is happening. So, yeah. All right, I'm on the trail. Look at the snow that's falling back here. I'll throw up uh, a shot of, I think, like five days ago. What this looked like. Wow. All right. I side hilled all the way around this. You know, you don't want to climb up another one and then come down, but I think that would have been actually much easier. Side hilling all this kind of sucked. It was the least fun part of my day so far. So yeah, I think it would have been easier to just go up that and then I would have had a bunch of flat walking, you know, down here. I would have got up here, which is where the waypoint of my Kind of the top of my passes. Instead, I was side hilling the whole thing, like 500 meters of side hilling. Look at the snow over here. Wow. All right, well, I am back on trail. Let's uh, let's roll out of here. In a lot of ways, I quite enjoyed walking through the forest better than this. Like this trail is torn up by the horses and the cows. So underneath the snow, there's a lot of little surprises from my feet, all right? Like step in little divots and all kinds of crap. Whew, like, <laughs> like that. So yeah, Ugh. not the nicest walking, but whatever, it's a trail. And I pretty much don't have to think for the rest of this, I can just hike out of here. All right. Got that little section done. I say a little, but it felt like it took a while, honestly, to get from the pass down to here. Where are we? Here we go. All right, now I just gotta, gotta keep going up the Price Camp Trail. And uh, yeah. back down to the river. This trail down here, it follows the river all the way up to here and then it kind of breaks off and goes up a draw. And you can see there's ribbons and, but it also sort of keeps going down here. It's kind of a mystery trail. I thought I might do that today, like just walk down there a little ways, but 
I think I've had enough. There's two kilometers to go to my car and I have to cross and it's quarter after three. So I have pretty much enough daylight left to cross, get back to my car and drive up that, that uh, you know, fun, fun road up to Turner Valley before it gets dark. So yeah, I think I will just be happy with my accomplishments today and carry on. I forgot that you go through a drift fence down here. So this, pretty safe to say, this is the same one I was following up top. So I wonder if you could just follow this fence up. I wonder how steep it gets. Because the fence always has a bit of a trail, a bit of a clear area beside it, right? Because they built the thing. Looks like it gets kind of steep. Well, whatever. The way I went up is obviously pretty safe, so I recommend you do that. Alrighty, I'm almost back to the crossing. You can see that uh, there's footprints over here. People will just kind of walk down along here. I don't know if there's a bit of a path or what, but you can also see that that's exactly how far you get, unless you were going to start walking on the ice. And I mean, the ice is unpredictable, right? It's, you can see it still breaks through in places, so yeah. All right. Alrighty. It's only me that's come in here and some animals. You know I'm not worried about a crossing when I will give up a hand to hold a phone, right? Alrighty. Got this here. This is where I kind of broke through the first level. Let's see if I can, oh, there, a little break there. But other than that, as far as I know, I never got above zero down here. So I'm really not too worried about and this area doesn't get sun. That area gets sun. That's why it's kind of broken open, right? All right. And towards the edge is always where you're kind of at your most danger of breaking through. It's also where there's the least amount of water. So, Ugh. Maybe you get your feet wet, but that would be it. Okay. Well, for all the exploring I've done in this area, I had no idea what was kind of farther down this road along the, along the river. So obviously I feel like doing a bit more adventure. Here's kind of the first top that I just did. So I started walking down here. I had no idea there was a day use area down there. There's even a building down there. Huh. Well, I'm finding this pretty humorous that I had not a clue this was down here. If something isn't in a guide, a book, it's almost like I have no bloody clue it exists. But this is where normal people come. When they park in that parking lot, they come and they walk around down here. There's snowshoe tracks. There's a toboggan track. I had no idea this was down here. That's funny. This is not bad in the in the winter, you know. This is cool. The way the water mingles in with the ice. Not bad, man. Not bad. I can see why people come down here and walk around in the winter. In this uh, kind of day use area, right? Well, that was fun. I had no idea that whole area was there. Like, when people come park here, that's generally where they are walking around. I'm going to go ahead and take that leap. I've explored the area, the trails, and I didn't know that was there. And someone who's never even crossed the river or gone and explored most of the trails in this area, they probably knew. <laughs> it's, just, it's kind of funny. Mount McNabb, in my opinion, is a perfect December hike. 
you know that the river is pretty much frozen uh, there's not too much snow yet hopefully and yeah you just get up there and I mean the winter gates are closed so there's your options get a little low right and I have basically hiked this area like the stuff that's in the book I've basically hiked it the stuff I can get to anyway now so maybe one more but I would have to get up at like 6 a.m. for real it's just we're like a week away from the shortest day of the year, right? It's, the daylight is definitely a problem and the snow is starting to be a problem. Soon we will be at that very sad time of the year where there is just too much snow to really do much. So it'll be, okay, go and hike whatever you can find, right? <laughs> I'll be starting to run out of new trails to try and find, to try and explore. And you know, it happens every year for a few months. Get out there and hike.